Hello, Tricksters. Uh, welcome to Click Tricks 2022. Uh, we're all super, super, super happy uh, to see you all uh, at the Click Tricks contest uh, this year again. So we've had a lot of students joining Click Tricks uh, in the past years, and we've had so much fun uh, hosting them all and uh, you know working with them, uh, collaborating with them uh, while they built uh, a lot of different uh, chatbots. Uh, you know, uh, click widgets and all of that. So we're happy to have you on board. Welcome again. Uh, I'm Michelle from the Zoho Sales IQ team, and I'm going to be taking you through today's introductory webinar from Zoho Sales IQ. So this webinar is going to be entirely focusing on building Zobots. So it's going to teach you about the basics of building Zobots and bringing a lot of external applications into Zoho Sales IQ using features called widgets. So uh, with respect to um, uh, the Click Tricks contest, you're either going to be building a chatbot uh, for a business website, or you're going to be building standalone widgets to display uh, information inside your live chat window. I know uh, this might all, may, this, these might sound a little like Greek and Latin to you, but I'm just going to break them uh, into very, very tiny parts so that uh, you could understand these concepts better and become an expert at bot building, right? So without any further ado, let's jump right into the webinar. So first things first, uh, let me again uh, remind you that you're going to be building chatbots for a business website or you're going to be building something called widgets to display information from external applications inside Zoho Sales IQ. So this webinar is going to be focusing on a lot of different things. Uh, first things first, we're going to give you a very, very brief introduction about uh, why you need uh, live chat on a business website, and then about what role Zoho Sales IQ has to play when it comes to uh, connecting uh, support representatives uh, or maybe a business as a whole uh, and uh, visitors. Then about what different modes of engagement are available in Zoho Sales IQ for visitors to connect with your business. Then we move on to uh, our spotlight for the day, uh, basics of building Zobots in Zoho Sales IQ. So the chat bot building platform in Sales IQ is called uh, the Zobot. So we're going to be telling you what different options you have uh, to build your chatbots on. And then we'll move on to uh, teaching you about how you can build standalone widgets in Sales IQ to bring uh, data from external apps or push data to external applications. And then we'll also uh, tell you here and there about some real time use cases, right? So, does that sound okay to you? Let's jump right into the se session. So, first things first. Why do businesses need a website? So this is the era of uh, online businesses. This is the era of e-commerce. This is the era of everything uh, uh, that's, that's working on the internet, right? So every business uh, needs a business website. So now, at, during the contest, you will have to build a website first to then um, make sales like you available on it and then build chatbots, right? So where and how can you build a website uh, to start working on your project? You can either use sites.zoho.com, Zoho, uh, uh, you know, website building platform, or you can use any other website builder of your choice. So if you're using sites.zoho.com, I'll quickly show you how you can build a website. So when you log into sites.zoho.com, you will look at a dashboard like this. This will have a bunch of different websites. So this is my dashboard. I've already created a bunch of websites. So you, all you have to do is just click on create new website. And uh, then you will have to quickly pick a template that you love, right? Um, so maybe this. You enter the name of your site here. You click on create site. And 
and voila, your entire template uh, will be ready, right? So inside Zoho sites, you have a lot of drag and drop elements. So you don't have to write the source code manually for every element that you want to add. You click on plus, you click on elements, and you see all of the elements that you need to build a website right here. So all you have to do is just click on it or drag and drop it inside your builder, and these elements become available for you. So when you are done uh, building your website, all you have to do is click on publish and your website will be live and accessible, right? So you create a subdomain. If your subdomain is available, you click on proceed to publish. And your site is all ready, right? So. That's how easy it is to create a website using Zoho Sites. You can either choose this, or if you prefer any other website builders, you can use them too, right? So in that case, you will have to uh, add a small code snippet. If you're using any other builders, website builders, you will have to add a small piece of code that I'll talk to you about um, to make your sales IQ live chat available on the website, right? So let's move on to the next uh, section now that we know how and where to build a website. Why do you need a uh, live chat on a website, right? So for anyone who has a business website, uh, for an example, so they need to uh, be able to connect with visitors or visitors uh, should be able to connect with them, right? So if people land on a website and they don't know what to do, what's the point of having a website, right? The next time they're not going to come and visit your website or maybe if you have a, an online store, they're not going to buy anything from your store because they're all a little lost and they don't know what to do. But to know what happens on a site or to know what is happening with a customer, what kind of pages he is accessing, what actions he is performing on the website, for all of these um, uh, information, you can use a, a platform like Zoho Sales IQ. So when you embed Zoho Sales IQ's live chat code on a website, you will be able to see who lands on the website what that particular person is doing on your website, how many pages they're accessing, how much time they're spending on a website, do they like, their, like your website or not, uh, do, are they making purchases from your website, you can see all of this information when you embed uh, Sales IQ's live chat code inside your website's source code, right? So this is basically a medium of connecting your uh, business and the people that uh, try and interact with your business the people that land on your website so with a platform like zoho sales iq you will be able to uh, learn a lot of information about the people that land on your uh, website and you can converse with them accordingly right so we now know what zoho sales iq is for on a website so it's basically a bridge that connects your website uh, uh, visitors and your uh, support representatives which is you uh, so at this point it's just going to be you because you don't uh, have a business as such you're going to be building uh, bots and widgets right so it's going to be you at this point let me quickly tell you what a zoho sales iq is right so when a lot of businesses moved online a lot of customer relationships were getting uh, jinx they were getting broken because you know uh, there were a lot of missed out conversations delayed responses uh, There was no connectivity between uh, visitors and uh, support representatives So this was when we came up with the idea of a customer engagement and live chat software called Zoho sales IQ so this uh, particular platform is going to help you filter the visitors that land on the site engage in conversations with them and also segment and identify visitors on the website. So in actual business, it's going to help boost sales, support and marketing activities, right? So there are a lot of different modes of communication that are available in sales iq the most important of them being 
live chat. So when uh, you have, you embed Zoho Sales IQ's live chat code in the website source code, you'll have a tiny uh, live chat button that is going to enable people to interact with you, to have a live chat conversation with you, like you see on a lot of different uh, platforms today, right? You have live chat on uh, Amazon, you have a live chat on Flipkart, other e-commerce sites, right? So you're going to have a live chat button like that on your website when you embed Zoho Sales IQ's live chat code. So other than live chat, what else do we have? You can make uh, audio calls, uh, you can uh, share your screen with visitors, you can see, you can uh, show them what's happening in real time, right? Uh, you also have mobile SDKs, right? If you want to uh, engage with your uh, mobile customers, you have a mo mobile SDKs called MobiListen. And uh, then we have, we also have integrations with channels like Facebook and Telegram, right? So uh, visitors can also initiate conversations from there and they can be handled, right? So you have a lot of different options like these. And then we also have bots, which is our spotlight uh, for today, which we'll be talking about uh, in detail during the later parts of the session. So these are the different modes of communication that are available in uh, Zoho Sales IQ. So. Before we move on to the details, that we need to log into Zoho Sales IQ. So, as uh, all of you are new to this whole platform, I think you will be, uh, uh, you know, required to create uh, an account with uh, Zoho Sales IQ. So, all you have to do is just log in to salesiq.zoho.com, and you will have to sign up, right? So, when you click here. You'll see the sign in page and if you don't have a Zoho account, you can just click on sign up now. So click on sign up now and you can enter all of these details and start your free trial, right? So once you log into Zoho Sales IQ, this is what you will be uh, seeing. So this is the dashboard that you will be uh, seeing on your screen, right? So now you have logged into Zoho Sales IQ. So the next step will be adding Zoho Sales IQ's live chat code to your website. So I've already told you, uh, we've finished the step of building our website, right? Let's assume that we've done that. The next step will be adding the sales IQ live chat code to your website. So for this, if you clearly remember, we had looked at two different options. One was using Zoho sites and the other was using an, any website builder of your choice. If you're using uh, Zoho sites, then adding the Zoho sales IQ live chat code to your website is super easy. Let me tell you how, right? So all you have to do is go back to your Zoho Sites Builder. So this is the website that I was building earlier. So all I have to do is click on Settings. And under Integrations, I have to click on Zoho Sales IQ Live Chat. And I will choose the brand from here, right? And I'll just enable this button and click on Connect. That's all, right? So when I do this, my live chat widget will be visible on the website. So that's how easy it is to see uh, or enable the live chat uh, option with the help of Zoho Sites. If you're using any other builder, you're going to have to do another process. So I will show you what this process is like, right? So let me use this and show you the same. You can also do the same uh, using Zoho Sites, but we've made it easy for you. Right, so I've copied the URL. I'm going back into Zoho Sales IQ dashboard, and here you have something called settings. Click on that, then you have websites here, right? Brands, right? So here I'm going to be adding a new website. So I'll just click on add. I will say Zilka Traveling, click create. Then I'll associate uh, departments. So these might all look very new to you, but we're going to be giving you a lot of help documentation links that you can read uh, and understand Zoho Sales IQ in detail. So now I'm just uh, sticking with the default configurations and clicking done, right? And here you'll have to click on installation, then on website, right? And then I'm going to copy this code and I'm going to go back here, sorry, to the builder. Okay. 
here I'll just go to header and put a code and I'll just add it here and save right so you have similar uh, sections and other website builders as well. So you just copy the code from uh, Zoho Sales IQ and you will just paste it in the section. Click on save. Then close this and click publish. So look at this. Now you'll be able to see the live chat widget on your website right we're done adding the zoho sales IQ live chat port to your website at this point people that land on your website your visitors will be able to communicate with you and talk to you about your business if they have any queries questions they need help uh, they could do anything uh, pretty much anything with this live chat widget Right. So we've done all this. So what happens if you don't have operators, if you are not available to pick up uh, chats that come in from your visitors, you don't have any other person uh, to help you with these chats. So what happens at this point? A lot of chats will go unmissed. Your visitors won't have anybody to talk to. So as a result of this, they're going to leave your website, which is a loss for you. Right. So at this point, we have. Um, a solution for you you will uh, build chatbots right uh, our goal you're going to build chatbots and you're going to deploy them uh, on your uh, websites right and they are going to be picking up these chat requests from your visitors instead of your operators so basically uh, when your operators are not available when they're busy or when you are busy these chatbots are going to do your work exactly like you do it Right? They're going to help you in assisting the visitors that land on your website. So what is uh, the Zobot? The Zobot is a bot development platform that is available inside Zoho Sales IQ. So with this, uh, anybody who is using Zoho Sales IQ can build a lot of compelling chatbots to automate interactions with customers on the website. So these bots can be programmed to, you know, respond to act and to qualify customers that land on your website. What will they do? What are these uh, bots going to do? They're going to maintain a conversation with a user in natural language. They're going to understand the intent of what the user is trying to say. And then they will send out a response based on business rules and data of the organization. So what is amazing about these chatbots is that they can be run on both websites and on mobile applications. So we have a lot of different platforms here. So the little tiny bubbles that you see here are all the different platforms uh, that you can build your Zobots on. So I will be uh, telling you about all of these uh, platforms, but you need to remember that our focus will be on a few platforms that I will be telling you uh, during the later part of this session. So the more complex your use case is, the more your probability of winning, right? You got that? Make a note of it. The more complex your use case is, the more complex your bot functionalities are, the more the probability of winning, right? Let's move forward. So we know what the Zobot is. So when you build a Zobot and you deploy it on your website, this is what a conversation with a visitor is going to look like. So these robots are going to make conversations as natural as possible, exactly like how a human operator would do, right? They're going to share images. They're going to share links. They're going to give suggestions. They're going to collect feedback. They're going to make conversations easy for your visitors. So coming to bot platforms. So what platforms do we have as of now? So we have two different categories. We have a bunch of in-house platforms and we have some external platforms or integrations, right? The first platform is the sales IQ scripts platform. So the sales IQ scripts platform is going to be entirely based a uh, code based uh, platform that is going to uh, allow you to build the bot of your dreams. The sales IQ scripts platform is a very, very powerful platform where you can customize your bot functionalities from scratch so this is the first and foremost platform and if you want to replicate 
you know, uh, the use case that you have built using the Sales IQ Scripts platform. If you want to go codeless, you have another codeless bot platform. This is also a, a very, very powerful platform, but um, we'd prefer it if you write your uh, Zobots using Sales IQ Scripts platform, right? Uh, like I said, the more complex your use case is, uh, and also depending on the platform you choose, uh, your uh, probability of winning the contest increases, right? So we have cordless bots. And then if you already built a bot engine using any other um, platform, then you can integrate it with a Zobot using webhooks. And we also have another NLP platform from uh, Zoho Sales IQ called uh, Zia Skills that you can use your... Uh, that you can use to build your bots on. And with respect to external integrations, we have Dialogflow, we have Watson Assistant, and Microsoft Azure, right? So your focus is going to be building Zobots using the Sales IQ Scripts platform. So that would be the first preference. So make sure you pick that platform because it's going to help you uh, customize uh, your bot as much as you want to, right? So the first step uh, in building your chatbots is designing a flowchart. So what is going to make this entire bot building process easy for you? Define what you want your bot to be like. You define the functionalities of your bot. Put it in pen and paper. Create a flowchart. Create a clear cut flowchart before you start building your bot. Uh, you know, inside the flowchart, include every tiny step that you want the bot to go through before it uh, finishes a conversation with a visitor. If you wanted to send a welcome message, add that in the flowchart. Say, send a welcome message, then collect the name of the visitor, collect the email of the visitor, do this, do that, um, uh, you know, create a calendar appointment. All of this has to come in your flowchart. Make your flowchart as detailed as possible so that you can make sure you don't miss out on any functionalities that you have in mind for your bot, right? So this is just a tiny example. This is a very, very small use case. But uh, remember, your use cases shouldn't be like this. They have to be a lot more complex. They have to include a lot of integrations. They have to uh, include a lot of actions, uh, you know, uh, a lot of unique actions they'll have to include. Right. So you include rich text. You do all of this, put all of this in the flowchart, keep it ready and then move on to building your bot. So the first step is creating a flowchart, uh, you know, after logging in and adding the sales IQ code to your website and all that. The first step to bot building is building a or designing a flowchart. Then you choose the platform. So I'll tell you about what platforms we have. And I'll also explain to you in brief uh, about how these platforms function individually, right? The first platform is Sales IQ Scripts, the bot uh, building platform that is entirely based on code, Deluge code, right? So this is a website uh, that you can access uh, and you would see a bot that was built using the Sales IQ Scripts platform. Look at this website, look at the bot on this website and look at the details that have been put into this bot. That amount of detail you can put in, that amount, so many integrations you can put in when you pick up the Sales IQ Scripts platform. So quickly take a look at it and we will then move on uh, to the next uh, section. Let me also access this along with you. So here's my live chat widget. And when I click on it, I have a real estate bot. So the bot uh, just jumps up uh, with a welcome message to the visitor. So I will just say looking for a property. I'll just skip these questions. We'll move on to the main part. So I will choose uh, the department. So let me say I'm looking for an apartment or a house. So I'll pick a location. This is the location widget. So we have rich text uh, widgets in uh, Zobots that are going to help you uh, pick locations. They're going to, uh, you know, uh, a map is going to pop up and you can choose the location and send it. 
and according to the location the bot is going to give me a bunch of suggestions um, a new construction so i'm just going to give in my price range so this is another rich text card called uh, the slider so i'll just say 50 lakhs and it's going to display a bunch of images uh, of properties based on all of my inputs right so i will choose one of these properties and it's going to help me schedule a meeting right it's going to say schedule a meeting so i'll click on schedule and when i click on this this is another rich text uh, card called the calendar card so i'll pick a date maybe tuesday and i'll just click on schedule and i will enter my email and my phone number right and my meeting has been Schedule. So once my meeting has been scheduled, this bot has been designed to record it on uh, the Zoho calendar. So my appointment is going to be recorded inside my Zoho calendar and I will receive a reminder. Did you see the amount of details that were put into the building of this bot? This is exactly what you can do with Sales IQ scripts and we'd expect to see a beautiful use case like this uh, from you, right? A beautiful and a very, very complex use case. So let's move on. So how does the Sales IQ Scripts platform work? So once you start working with the Sales IQ Scripts platform, you'll get to the hang of it. So basically, this is all code. This is nothing but code. And uh, Deluge is a super, super easy language uh, for you to quickly uh, learn from, right? So this uh, platform basically functions on the basis of something called handlers. So the name handlers is, is just a fancy term for where you will write the different codes for the different activities that you want the bot to perform, right? What handlers do we have? We have four handlers inside this platform. One is called the trigger handler, right? Uh, as the name suggests, it's going to help you trigger uh, messages, welcome messages or any other messages at the beginning of the conversation based on conditions. Second is the message handler which means it's going to handle all of the messages that are coming from the visitor. This is the second one. Then we have the context handler, which is going to process all of the information received from the visitor and perform actions. Then comes the failure handler. And again, as the name implies, it means it's going to handle failures, right? So let's move on. I'll tell you about each of these handlers in brief, quickly explain to you uh, in easier, simpler terms about what these handlers do. First one uh, is the trigger handler. So this is a piece of sales IQ script, which is used to invoke a custom action or message by the bot when visitors visit your website. When is this going to be executed? When is this going to be working? This will be executed only when you set a bunch of rules when you configure your bot and those rules are satisfied by the visitor. As simple as that. It's basically going to send out uh, maybe a personalized uh, chat invite uh, to the visitor. So with this, you can attract customers to your business, right? So you can do all of this. How is this? This In real time, this is pretty much like a welcome desk at a car showroom. So I'm sure all of you must have visited a car showroom. So what happens when you visit a showroom? Somebody is always running up to you. They're asking you, uh, hello, sir. Hello, ma'am. What do you need help with? Um, this is the new model that we currently have. Uh, this uh, particular... Uh, uh, car model is on offer. They do all of this, right? They tell you all of this. This trigger handler is exactly like that. What are you going to configure in the trigger handler? If you have any uh, interesting events coming up, if you have any discounts going on, if you have, um, uh, you know, a major sale uh, going on uh, your uh, business website, all of this you can communicate with the help of a trigger handler. You can make it as attractive as possible, make it very personalized and attract your visitors this is the message handler Here comes the message handler so what is this so this is going to handle all of the messages that come in from your visitor as simple as that it's going to analyze all of the messages that come in from the visitor and it's going to keep it stored in the code later on to perform actions right the, like i said actions would be performed by a different handler so this is just going to process these messages and keep responding to your visitors so the best example that can help you relate better is that of a call center. So when you call a call center, a support representative uh, responds to you, 
right? He he helps you if you have he or she helps you if you have trouble with something. They don't voluntarily call you. There are cases, but when you call a customer support center and they respond to you, that's the exact example of a message handler. So basically, when the visitor responds to the trigger message, the proactive message that we sent earlier, the message handler will come into play. And then all of the messages that are sent after that uh, uh, response are going to be handled by the message handler. So it has a very, very simple function. It's going to analyze messages, respond to them, and store them in the code. This is the message handler. Then you have the context handler. So what do you do with all of the information that you've collected with the message handler? This is all going to go to waste, right? If you don't do anything with it. So then comes the context handler. The context handler comes into play to help you perform actions with the data that you have collected, right? So say, for example, uh, you want to schedule an appointment. We had just looked at that in the real estate uh, bot use case, right? So if you want to schedule an appointment, where does the context handler come into play? So the context handler is going to uh, schedule an appointment for you. How it is going to collect details like the name, uh, email, uh, and what else did I enter? My phone number It's going to collect all of these details. And then it's going to perform that action with these details. It's going to create an appointment for me and record it inside my calendar, right? So this is what the context handler is for to perform an action in an in a Zoho service or an external service. It's just going to perform actions. So this is what the context handler is for. Then we have the failure handler. So in case uh, the visitor is sending a message, but there is nobody to respond to that message, then the failure handler is going to come into action, right? And uh, if uh, say maybe uh, the department they're trying to contact is not available, email address is invalid all of these cases all of the failure cases are going to be handled by the failure handler so entirely this particular sales IQ scripts platform is going to be working based on these four handlers so you're going to write uh, your code in parts uh, you're going to divide them and you can write you're, you're going to write them in the four different handlers so like I said, we'll give you more uh, links. Uh, we'll give you more use cases that you can use to learn more about the uh, platform. Uh, you can uh, read as and when you're uh, beginning to build your bot use cases. Then you have something called connection. So how do you uh, connect to an external service? How? Uh, so if you have an operator, your, your operator, human operator, obviously knows how to jump into another service, pick up data from there, and use the data in a conversation. But what do you do when there's a Zobot in that place? You have to create connections, and you have to automate this process. For that, you have a feature called connections in uh, the Zobot platform. So this connections feature is basically going to help you create secure access to uh, cloud applications and it's going to help you help the Zobot pull data from external services and then use it during a visitor operator conversation, right? Basically, you're connecting the sales IQ scripts platform that is the Zobot with a cloud application using these connections. So here you have a lot of different options uh, that you can uh, choose from. You have, um, you know, uh, Zendesk, you have Zoho CRM, Zoho Desk, you have Salesforce. You can connect to a lot of different apps uh, using these connections and you can help the Zobot uh, draw information from these services and use them in conversations. Right, so now we know about uh, the Sales IQ Scripts platform. What is the Codeless Bot platform, right? So this is going to help you create uh, use cases without having to write any code. Like I said, this is just another option, but uh, your uh, use case will be picked up, will ha it'll have more preference. If you have picked up uh, the Sales IQ Scripts platform and you've worked on a complex use case, but anyways, I'm gonna tell you about the Codeless Bot platform and what it has to offer. So this Codeless Bot platform is a code-free rule-based chatbot builder. So basically we have a drag and drop interface. Do you remember that I told you that the first step to building your bot is designing a flowchart? This is the only thing you're going to be doing when you are using the Codeless Bot platform. So basically you have a builder in which you're going to build a flowchart. You're going to design a flowchart and you will leave all the building to 
sales IQ, right? This is um, just for your reference. This is just to know about the platform that we have in store, right? You have a drag and drop interface. You have a bunch of elements that you can drag and drop, build your flowchart, and then just click on publish. Your board is going to be created. It has a very, very, um, uh, you know, powerful interface that you can use. Uh, it makes a bot building super quick, right? So whatever you create in sales, like your scripts can be replicated on the codeless bot platform as well, but without having to write any code. This is what a flowchart built on the codeless bot platform looks like. And um, again, this is what your actual Zobot flowchart should look like. Not, the, not on the codeless bot platform. Before you uh, start building the bot, define a detailed use case like this and then go on to start building your bot. This is going to make the entire process a cakewalk for you. So build complex use cases, right? So this is the codeless bot uh, user interface. Right, so what are the four steps that you will follow uh, to build a bot on a codeless bot platform? First one is setting up the profile. That is, you will configure a name for the bot. You will set up um, uh, brands. You will associate it to a website. Uh, you will give a description. You will do all that. Second step is configuring. That is, uh, when it has to uh, send out proactive messages, what is its response interval, uh, and all that. So I'll just quickly show you all of these configuration parts uh, shortly, uh, but before that I'll just tell you all the steps that you'll have to uh, follow the third step will be building your flowchart So you're going to drag and drop elements uh, inside the user interface and you're going to be building your flowchart and your fourth step is publishing the bot These are the four steps that you're going to be following uh, uh, to build uh, bots on the codeless bot platform so this is the UI. So these are all the elements inside uh, the codeless bot UI. So you have cards and blocks. So these elements, these individual boxes that you see here are called cards or blocks. You have a search bar. If you want to search for a particular card, you can just do that here. You can delete cards uh, as and when you're building your use case. Then you have version history. If you want to see the previous versions of the flowcharts that you have built, you can just click on version history and see that. This is the publish button. These are all the block categories that you can choose your elements from. So these are all, uh, uh, these elements are all part of these different categories of blocks. You have six different categories of blocks that you can choose from. Then you have uh, zoom options. You can zoom in or zoom out for better clarity. You have a preview option. So this amazing feature called preview option is available on all uh, platforms uh, or integrations inside the Zobot. You can see or preview the working of your bot um, in real time before you actually publish it on the website. So when you see, when you preview the working, you'll be able to figure out what errors there are in your building and you can fix them before you actually publish it on the website. Right, so you have a preview option to do that. Then you have a card holder. So you have tiny plus icons where you will drag and drop these elements into. These are called the card holders. Then you have a bunch of controls here. You have undo, redo. You have uh, the reset option. Uh, if you have, uh, you know, you have a cluttered board. If you want to declutter, you have auto arrange. You have uh, fit to screen. So if you have a huge use case, there are chances that it might. Um, you know, uh, just spread out on the entire screen and it reduces the uh, visibility and all that. In that case, you can just use the fit to screen option and it's going to bring your uh, flowchart into the screen and it's going to improve the viewability of the flowchart. So you have a bunch of controls like these. This is the UI. And uh, these are all the different uh, terms that you'll need to know before you start working with the Codeless Bot platform. And we'll give you links to all of these. I'm not moving into all of these in detail. These are all the different uh, controls that I had just spoken about with the image previously. Uh, you can drag and drop, attach, detach links. You can delete, you can declutter, you can zoom in, zoom out, preview the working of your bot. You can do all that. 
Right. Like I said, these are the different categories of blocks that you're going to be using. You have uh, response blocks. So response blocks means you have quick replies. You have uh, cards to help you share articles, videos and links. Right. So these are response blocks. Then you have input blocks. So using these input blocks, you can collect information from the visitor. For example, option or slider or rating. I think you saw all of these in the uh, use case that I previously showed you on the website, right? So calendar widget, you have location, slots, buttons and all that. Then you have action blocks. If you want to uh, perform actions like maybe forward the chat to an operator when the bot is handling a chat, if uh, you know you want to forward it to a human agent, you can use this. You have criteria router, you have send email. So basically, if you want to perform any actions, you can choose from these blocks. Then you have end blocks to end conversations or if you want to block any visitors. Then you have data blocks when you have specific data that you want to collect name, email, phone or any other visitor information, you can use data blocks. Then you have integration blocks, right? So integration blocks, you have uh, CRM associating, creating leads in CRM, recording lead details, uh, create associating contacts, maybe creating a ticket inside Zoho desk, add somebody to your mailing list. For all these, you have integration blocks. So these are the different categories of blocks that are available on the Codeless Bot uh, platform. Then you have bot context and visitor fields on the Codeless Bot platform. What are these features for? So if you want to store information temporarily or permanently inside uh, the Codeless Bot memory until the end of a conversation or permanently, you can use bot context and visitor fields. So you will see these options while you create each of the cards inside the Codeless Bot platform. Right. So I will leave a link uh, to a very, very detailed uh, webinar that we had done pre previously on codeless bots for you to refer to. And here you can learn all about all of the features that I had brushed through uh, in the last five to ten minutes. Right. So I will just uh, quickly touch all of these topics and uh, I'm going to run you through all of them. You can watch the webinars later on uh, if you want to understand these concepts in detail i'm just giving you the idea so if you want to store information in the bots flow you can use these context and visitor fields then you have plugs so if you want to save yourself the trouble of writing logic more than once so you have one logic and you don't want to keep writing this but the code for this particular logic again and again and again uh, inside uh, your uh, Codeless bot platform, you can use this feature called plug. So you can write logic once, you can write the logic that you want to execute once, and you can keep reusing these logics again and again in different codeless bot use cases. Right, then you have webhooks. So if you have already uh, used any other platform to build your Zobots or to build uh, chatbots on, if you use any other service, in that case, you can use that bot agent. You can integrate it with Zobot, Zoho Sales IQ Zobot using webhooks, right? So your internal services and uh, then you have the Zobot and the, your webhooks will be the connection between these two, right? So you will also see a uh, help documentation links that we will share later on uh, to give you the detailed steps that you will have to follow to integrate any other external uh, chatbot platform agents with a Zoho Sales IQ Zobot. Then you have a platform called Zia Skills. This is a Zoho Sales IQ's uh, this is Zoho Sales IQ's NLP uh, platform, Zia Skills. So you can use it to create uh, bot agents uh, in Zoho Sales IQ. So here, basically, you're going to be training your uh, bot with a lot of different training phrases, with a lot of sample questions that might come in from visitors. And what answers should these bots give if they want to respond to questions that come from the visitor. So you're going to be basically training them with questions and answers and they're going to be uh, ready for picking up chats from your visitor. So this is basically uh, natural language processing, right? 
then comes using a rich text uh, inside the zobot so like i said you have a lot of different options uh, uh, available for you you can insert calendars and bot conversations you can give visitors suggestions you can uh, maybe uh, you know add a location widget so that they don't have to type their address manually they can just uh, type it out on the map and share it with uh, you or your operators for easy access you can collect feedback with smileys uh, with maybe star ratings you have all of these options you have a lot of rich text so whenever you pick a use case make sure you use as much rich text as possible and include as many integrations as possible these are all uh, plus points when it comes uh, to us considering the use case that you have built they increase your probability of winning so we want a lot of nuances we want a lot of details inside your bot which is going to add points to your score and it's going to help you win the contest so read all about these cards uh, we'll give you all the resources that are needed but use as much rich text as possible create as many integrations as possible and then build your use case right so let's move on so these are some of the cards that we had seen we had already looked at a calendar this is a, a date and time uh, slots uh, widget this is the uh, suggestions uh, card this is the feedback card so you can collect uh, smiley uh, feedback in the form of smileys right then you have a display card so these cards uh, these are a bunch of cards that are helpful to collect uh, inputs from the visitor and if you want to display something to your visitor then in that case maybe you can use display cards so this is a different category of rich text uh, in the zobot so here you have uh, you can display images you can send out articles you can share a lot of links uh, with your visitors you can share videos right so these are all the rich text different types of rich text that you can use inside your zobot now we come to the second part uh, of our webinar the second your two options with respect to click tricks are either building a zobot or building a standalone widget to bring information inside sales IQ or push information from sales IQ. so for this you have a feature called widget you have widget and form controllers that I'm going to be talking to you about right now So Zoho Sales IQ will let you view all of the customer data that you need uh, during a chat, including maybe cart information, order details, the page they're on, and also about past chats. So for this, you can create a lot of custom widgets to display data from third-party tools. And even you can perform actions like pushing data uh, to a database or maybe processing a refund so do you see on the screen here these are all the different uh, widgets that we have uh, built already right so what a widget will exactly look like so we have created a widget for zoho crm see what information is displayed here all details about the contact is displayed here and uh, deals about this chat uh, then about then we have a widget for zoho desk if uh, they have any tickets um, in their name that will all be displayed here Right, so all of these details you can see inside the chat window when you create standalone widgets. So let me tell you what we'll be considering here at this point. We we are we are expecting to see uh, standalone widgets that are going to pull information or push information into external services, a very very powerful external services. Uh, so we don't want to see Zoho apps because we've built a lot of widgets for Zoho apps like Zoho CRM, Zoho Desk. So make sure you pick uh, an external service and you write a widget uh, to bring in information from that external widget um, inside Zoho Sales IQ. So that's when we'll be uh, considering your use case. Uh, so make this integration as uh, complex as possible. Pull in a lot of information, display a lot of information in the chat window, right? This is going to increase your probability of winning. Again, if you're building a bot, uh, pick a very, very complex use case uh, and use the Sales IQ Scripts platform, write complex code, 
uh, include as many integrations as possible. And if you're building a standalone widget, pick an external uh, application and not any uh, Zoho application, pick an external application and write a use case to bring data from that application into sales like you, right? Then comes form controllers. So this is the structure of a widget, right? This, this might also look a little Greek and Latin to you. Again, I'm going to be uh, sharing links uh, to a webinar that we've previously conducted. If you want to learn in detail uh, about widgets and form controllers, you can watch that webinar, right? So these are widgets. Then you have form controllers. So how cool would it be if you could customize all the functionalities of your forms under one roof? So you have a form. And what if I tell you, you could customize these forms inside uh, your dashboard itself, right? So for this, we have features called form controllers that can be used to customize forms to collect a lot of multiple structured data as inputs from operators to perform a particular action or push the data to any application. So inside your widget, so this is actually a widget right inside your widget say for example uh, I, here i have a crm widget right uh, so here inside this crm widget say uh, i want to create a lead right in that case i can just uh, have a button and i can embed a form in that button just like this so this is a desk uh, widget so here if i want to quickly create a ticket during the conversation i can just click on this and i will have a customized form popping up so this is what you're going to be writing the code for. So you will have to write the code for a form controller like this. And you're going to add it inside your widget. So if you're building a widget, make sure you also use, uh, you know, you also build uh, a customized form that you're going to embed inside your widget. And uh, then you send us the use case, right? So if you want to customize forms, if you want to add new forms inside your widget, you can use form controllers. For example, you can collect information, maybe uh, like a complaint from the customer, and then you can just create a, a ticket in your support desk application with the help of a form. So this is exactly like that. They're just asking for the customer's name. They're entering the issue, customer's email, and uh, uh, the criticality of that issue, and we're creating a ticket. So have a customized form like this in case you're building a standalone widget in sales IQ. So this is the form and this is the structure of the form, right? You can create any form. It is not necessary that you have to stick to the examples that you see here or the examples that I'm talking about here. You can create any form of your choice. Uh, you can include any functionalities that you want to, but make sure you include it in the use case, right? So you have two different options for you to build your widgets and form controllers on. Again, I'm telling you the preference would be for uh, widgets and form controllers that are built using the sales IQ scripts platform, right? When you write the code, we'll be able to uh, assess the complexity of your use case and we'll be able to reward you better. So uh, make sure you stick to the uh, sales IQ scripts platform when you build your bot or your widgets and form controllers. So it's up to you to choose your platform, but preference will be given to the people who choose uh, the code based uh, platforms. This is just to assess the complexity and your level of understanding, right? So you have two options here. So let me tell you how a simple use case would look like. So if you say, for example, I want to, uh, you know, I have an e-commerce store, I have an online shopping store. And uh, I just want to create or uh, make a note of all of the people uh, that have, um, you know, accessed more than three pages or have spent a lot of time on my website. Because I know that this, these people are going to be interested in my products or they're going to come back for a, a new purchase or something like that. Say I want to record the information about these customers. In that case, I can create a Zobot that will just record the details of these, collect the details of these customers and create a lead inside Zoho CRM. So for this, what will be my first step? Uh, when the visitor lands, I will uh, send out a welcome message and then I will collect the name of the visitor. Then I'll collect the email of the visitor. Then maybe I'll ask him to enter his company name, then his phone number. And then I will use the Zoho CRM create lead API and create a lead inside Zoho CRM. 
So the next time this visitor comes to my website, when he lands on my website, he will be recognized inside Sales IQ because I've already created a lead in CRM. His details have already been recorded in Sales IQ and in CRM. Right. So this is how this is just an example of a flowchart that you can design. It's just a small use case that you can, uh, you know, take reference from when you start building your bots. But this is not the use case we're looking at. I'm just giving you examples for your understanding. This is a simple, simple use case. We'll also share a lot of different sample codes that you can take a look at and, you know, decide how you want to build your bot like. So here are the list of webinars that you can watch. But before that, I'll quickly show you how you can add a new Zobot inside Zoho Sales IQ. So let's go back to our UI, right? So this is my Zoho Sales IQ uh, dashboard, right? And here, if I want to create a bot, I will click on settings, click on Zobot, click on add. I'll enter a name. Then I'll choose the platform. So we're going to be sticking to sales IQ scripts. I'll click on next. Then if I want to add a description for my bot, I'll do that. And then I'll choose uh, the website that I want to deploy my bot on. I'll associate departments. So by default, all departments inside sales IQ will be associated here. Choose bot working hours. Click on next. Then I'll choose the bot audience. So I'm just going to stick to all visitors. When the bot should initiate the chat, I'll say when visitors click on the chat widget. Here I'll configure the bot response interval. And if I want my bot uh, to maybe send out a warning message if uh, uh, you know a visitor has been idle for a long time on the site, I'm going to enable this chat inactivity actions option. So I'll send a reminder, uh, the bot will send a reminder the first message saying that, You've been idle for, uh, for you know, one or two minutes. Is there anything else I can help you with? And if they continue to remain dormant on the website, if I want to end the conversation, then I can configure that as well here. Then if you want your visitors to be able to connect with human operators when they're talking to the bot, during the middle of their conversation with the bot, you have to allow the allow handoff to operators. So in this case, uh, you know, when they click on the option inside the live chat window, their chat will be forwarded to a human agent and they can then converse with that agent. So when you allow this uh, particular option here, you can also configure a forward message. So you can enter a message that maybe will be dis that will be displayed to the visitor when their chat is being forwarded. So let me say, uh, please wait. While your chat is being forwarded right and i'll just click on next so now my bot configurations are, are done and i have landed inside the bot builder so inside the sales iq scripts bot builder you will see default code that is already there you can either stick to this code and make changes based on your requirements or you can delete this code entirely and start working based on your your, your own use cases right so you also have another option here. You, do you see this option called choose a template? When you click on this, you will be able to see a lot of different templates here, right? So we don't expect you to uh, build use cases using any of these templates, but you can use them for your reference, right? Make sure your use cases are entirely different from the templates that you see here. These are just for your reference. Your use cases must be fresh and as new as possible, as innovative and as unique as possible. Right? You can take reference from these. You can look at how the code has been written for each of these use cases and you can work on your own use case. And if you want to create a connection with an external service, click on connections and uh, you will land inside the connections dashboard. And here you can click on create connection and you'll see so many different services that you can choose from. You see this? You can create connections with all these services. You have Zomato, you have HubSpot, you have Medium, WordPress, uh, you have GitHub, MailChimp, Twitter. You can do anything. You can just uh, maybe pull in a tweet and display it to the visitor. You can maybe, uh, if you have an online restaurant, you can uh, maybe you know, pull the order status from Zomato and display it in live chat. You can do anything like this. 
right so you have so many different uh, connection options and once you're done you're going to click on create once you're done building your use case you will click on create and even after you've clicked on create you can make changes inside the code as many times as possible again you have a preview option click on it look at the working of your bot every step of your way so that you know when you've made a mistake correct it before you publish your bot on the website right and when you're done doing all of this click on publish and your bot will be published on the website that you have chosen right so we have detailed webinars to explain each of these steps to you uh, depending on all of the platforms we have webinars for all the platforms do you see this we will um, share all of these links with you so that you can watch them learn in detail and start building your use cases right and if you have any questions you can also uh, ask us and we have our developer documentation and sample codes as well we will again share all of these URLs with you take reference from these and make your use cases as unique as uh, possible right and uh, if you have any questions uh, this is your time please go ahead and ask us uh, all of your questions and we're ready to answer them and uh, even if you have questions later on you can post them in the uh, uh, channels and uh, we will respond to you right Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we will. Uh, we wish you a very, very happy and innovative, um, you know, bot building phase. Uh, we expect a lot of unique use cases from you. Amazing use cases. Uh, we are super excited to see all of these use cases that come from you. So happy Zoboting, and uh, we will see you again soon. Thank you.